Hello, welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Malay, and my hope and mission is to bring marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful, without jargon, complexity, or confusion, so you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and build your best life. Today's episode is called Blogs, Keywords for Blogs, and we're going to talk about why you need keywords and what they're all about and how to use them to your advantage. Before we get started, I want to share a quote with you from Simon Sinek. He's a thought leader, speaker, author, entrepreneur, and he says, Listening is not understanding the words of the question asked. Listening is understanding why the question was asked in the first place. So as we go forward, I want you to think about how to listen, how to listen to your audience so that you can understand what it is they're asking about. So blog keywords, right? Why? Why do we care? Well, because we're all doing the same things. We're all entrepreneurs, business owners, we're doing marketing, right? We're creating content, we're creating videos and podcasts and blog posts and web pages and webinars and workshops and books and lead magnets and articles and posts and we're on all these different platforms all day long and and we're around each other all the time and this is what is the common thing for us to do. But what I'm going to say to you is keywords are the things that make our connection to our audience. By using these words, search, when people go to search engines, they can connect with our content. So they're very important, as important as creating all the content that you create. And if you think about it, You're in that crowd of content creators, right? But your audience is alone with their need, their issue, or their question. They're wondering. They've they've got something on their mind. It's nagging at them. They have an issue, right? How do you feel when you have a problem or when you have something you're thinking through? You get blinders on and and you're just kind of are lost in thought and you're just swirling. That's your audience, right? We want to turn that thought of wandering in the dark, trying to find a solution to someone who's happy, right? Because they've found an answer that they can turn to to us to eliminate some of their worry, some of their frustration, to smile, to wave, right? And give them a response to their need. It sounds simplistic, I know. But ultimately, it's all about connection. We're connecting to our audience's need with our content. And we want those content that we've spent all these hours and hours creating to show up in search results when they put their question in, when they put their need in. We want to be an answer to that need. So in a previous episode, we discussed about finding keywords or phrases your audience might use for search for their solutions, right? When they're looking for an answer. We talked about including those words so that search engines can show your content to the searcher. Well, I'm going to take it a step further and say with your blog posts, which you change often, which are micro pieces of content, things that have a singular thought or idea or theme, you can write a blog post that answers a common question that they have along their journey to a solution. So if you understand what their need is, where they are in their journey and what they're trying to find out, you can answer their common questions with your blog post. So imagine this is what their issue or need looks like in their mind. They have all these bits of information that they've pulled from the internet or from people they know or thought leaders they've seen, the books they've read, other websites they've gone to. They have all these pieces, snippets of information, and they're comparing and contrasting to choose, to make a choice. 
And what if they sit down and search and they could get the primary question that starts them onto the way to a solution, if they could put that in search to help them move forward and get an answer, then that can help narrow down some of this information that they've got swirling in their head. It can take them, you could organize their thoughts with them. You could lay out a path to their solution. Wouldn't that be great? So by answering their initial question, um, you could give them a way to then jump to the next question and get the answer to that and the next question and get the answer to that. Do you see what I'm saying? Is they're on a journey to a solution. We can't expect our audience to come to dinner at our house without ever knowing our first name, right? You wouldn't do that. Well, the same is true of an audience searching for a solution. They have to get to know somebody. They also have to understand in their own minds that they're making the right choices to get to a solution. So what I'm going to say is that you're going to help them organize a pathway, answer a portion of their questions so that they can move forward and grow into a solution and expand their understanding so that they can address a need or get what they want, right? There's no guarantee that you will be that solution, but you will be a piece of, of the journey along the way and that makes a connection and that makes things better for you because you have to start your relationship with them somewhere. So you want to try to identify one of the primary questions they are asking with what your specialty is, what your expertise is, what you want your, audi your audience and your target audience, who you're trying to reach. What is one of their primary questions? And that starts with the six, who, what, when, where, why, and how, okay? There are a few others, I'm sure, but these are the most common ones. If you can find a primary question that they, a beginning searcher is looking for, and you can write a blog post that has a title, that's that question. When they type that question into search, it will be a match in Google search catalog, and you could be provided as the answer. Now, mind you, there are a few caveats there, but if you, you do that and you create that content for them that answers that initial question or the second question or a third question, right? If you do a good job answering that question, then they can learn more about you, learn how you present your ideas, what you're all about, right? And that's what we really want. We want them to know us, to like us, to trust us. And a blog is a unique opportunity to help people answer portion of their need, to help them along the way to a solution. Sometimes a website, you have these general pages and they're big, they're about your services as a whole or all the things you do and answering questions about that. This is a micro piece of content. This is a little piece, well done, that expands on everything they need to know, right? But it tells them that you understand where they are and what they're doing. Other people have encountered this question when they find an article about what they're asking, they're like, oh, this is common. Other people have this question too. That's great. I'm just like other people. Um, so there's many things that you do when you answer a common question that somebody has. And they're all wins for your audience, right? Your audience wins by acquiring a piece of information, solving a problem or addressing a need, and you're starting them on their journey to a solution, all right? You're gonna have the feeling of satisfaction knowing you help somebody, and they're gonna feel good knowing that they've got an answer to something. And I don't mean the big answers, I mean the small answers that add up to action. Right? Because we all, if you think about how you make a decision, even if it's to purchase something, you don't walk in the door and say, I want that car. No. 
You look at it on commercials, you look at it on the internet, you see other people who have them, you ask them questions, you compare and contrast on consumer reports or in other articles, you try to find out more about them, you try to find if they're reliable, uh, you want all the proof that it's a good decision. It's the same with everything else. Everybody has to have their proof to understand why they need, why you're the answer. And so this is your opportunity with your blog is to write a blog that has a question as the title and answer it. Okay. Now, you'll remember from our previous episodes, I hope that there are important places to use certain things for Google to understand what your blog post is about. So if you put the question as the title of your blog post, like for an example, uh, what is the best website platform? Because that's what a lot of people want to know. And I'm going to write within that, that there are three website platforms that I recommend that are the best that, that serve customers best, right? The questions in the title, that is an exact match to what they might be putting in in search. The description to the blog post, because every blog post has a description, doesn't matter what platform you're on, there's a description. And that's also used on the search results right underneath the link, which is your title. And you have 200 characters about to entice them to click on your link. So you might say the three platforms that use best practices in their operations as, as told by Forbes magazine. And that might be enticing enough for someone to click on your link and get to your article, right? So think about that as well. Don't waste your, your things by saying in this article or in this blog post. No, don't waste your words. Put something that's going to captivate them and make them want to click on your article link. And then in every blog, you have categories that you get to um, categorize your blog posts. So the say you've been blogging for years, you have hundreds of posts, right? Nobody's going to scroll through every single one. They want to be able to search and narrow down to a specific topic, right? So you tag them or you put categories on them like marketing or um, accounting or legal or, you know, specific things that are categories within your business. And you tag each blog post with those. So if someone wants to find out all the articles about websites, they would click here. If they want all the things about marketing, they'll go here for me, right? So you want to do that within your blog posts as well and make sure that those categories are relevant even for the searching people because the blog, the um, Google programs read those tags as well and they understand what that means. Now, the other caution I want to give you in all of this as we're wrapping up this episode is to say that there is no substitute for good content. Google is looking for expertise, authority, and trust in everything you present. It's their formula, and they are gauging what you present. So let's say you have a question, what are the three best, or what's the best website platform? That's my blog post question. I'm going to put within the description what I think that will entice them to click on it, but in the body of the blog post. I'm not going to say anything about numbers of words because that doesn't really matter. What matters is you fully and completely answer the question and you make it authoritative as an expert would be, not high level concepts that don't really tell anything. Really help them like they were your kid writing a term paper. You want to give them what they need, okay? You don't want to give them just a high-level fluff because they'll be frustrated. They'll, you'll get the opposite. And then Google may not think that you have the depth of content to present it as a solution. So if you don't write something that's worth their time to read, it doesn't matter what else you do because it won't be presented to them. So make sure you write good content. What's good content? It has images, it has details, statistics that are supported by sources, um, links to other places they can go for additional information. 
And then, of course, you're going to point them to another source or another article in your blog or a podcast episode or something that answers the next logical question they would have in the sequence along the journey to a solution. Do you see what we're doing here is we're leading them down a path in a good way, in a natural way to help them along their journey to the ultimate solution. And we hope that we are going to be part of that ultimate solution. And if we do this in stages, we help develop the relationship and the connections that they need to feel safe doing business with you. You're giving them social proof. They get to your website from searching for the answer to this question. You've given them that answer. They get to your website. They read your blog post. They say, oh, well, this person knows what they're talking about. Let me go see what podcast they've been on or let me go to their homepage or let me download their, their lead magnet or something in their giveaway. It opens the door to your content in all shapes and sizes. So don't underestimate the power of search, the power of a blog to provide micro content that can open the door to your other worlds that you have on your sites where you are. So thank you. Um, I have a workshop I want to share with you as we wrap up the episode. It's called The Simple Ways to Make Yourself Findable Today. And I want you to understand that if you they can't find you, they can't do business with you. And the Simple Ways Workshop is a way to understand what Google does, what the built-in features are in Google that you can use to help find out what questions your, your audience is asking, find out what they're looking for, so you can put that into your content. Get the suggestions from Google. Get to, get to know a little bit more about how that works so that your content can be findable by your audience when they use Google search. So visit dmalay.com slash simple ways. Find out more about the workshop and I hope to see you there next time. And thank you. I'm so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is. I hope you came away with a few nuggets you could apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful information so that you can have a thriving business, amazing relationships with your customers and clients. And as always, if you have any questions, post them on my Facebook page called The Marketing Matters Show. And the link is in the profile for this show. Join me here next week, too, for our next episode where we'll dive into more marketing topics that matter for you. Thanks very much for your time. 